Hey guys, this is gonna not really be a super mental health focused video, so if that's what you're interested in, there will definitely be like a link at the end to the mental health videos, or you can just scroll through my account. Um, this is gonna be a video on just history, kind of, and some education. So I have been inspired by all of the movements going on, the Black Lives Matter movement, and all these people coming together. So it's kind of a playoff of what I was starting to talk about in my last video, just a little more in depth, I suppose. Um, so I want to start off by addressing kind of how the police system originally began and what it came from. So there were, um, during the slavery times in America, these people that are known as slave patrols or patrollers. They were armed white men who were equipped with things like guns and whips um, in order to enforce punishment upon the slaves if they were not performing a task correctly or fast enough or if they were ticked off honestly. It started in it started in South Carolina, 1704, and lasted well into the Revolution. And with the fugitive slave laws um, enacted, it just gave more power to these patrollers who were able to hunt for runaway slaves to maim, murder, harm, otherwise cause injury to them. After the Revolution, those slave patrols in the South kind of shifted over into being the first sheriffs and cops. And that is how the police system was kind of founded, was with these roots in racial inequality and injustice. And they functioned primarily as slave patrols still while wearing a sheriff title instead. So they were still sent out to patrol the slaves, to capture them, to maim them, harm them, if they were not performing tasks or duties well enough. So while some might think that the cops we know today have been around forever, they're less than a century old. They've only been around for a short time and they did not start in some justice way of protection of citizens. It started off as injustice and a lack of protection for some of its citizens. Even after the revolution was over and there was no more slavery, there was still slavery. So that brings me along to the next uh, segment, I guess, which is the 13th Amendment. So the 13th Amendment as follows, and I'm gonna read, so sorry if my eyes like aren't looking at you. Um, it reads, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime or of the party, shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States, or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So pretty much what it's saying is, slavery is not okay unless you're a prisoner. So after the abolition of slavery, there was this new little hack that the South figured out in order to have their slaves continue on. The South suffered an extreme economic crisis. Many people were in poverty as it was pretty much a, a con an economy that functioned on the backs of slave labor. So Southern lawmakers found a loophole in this 13th Amendment and realized that they could arrest black men in particular and force them into indentured servitude pretty much, known as penal labor. So they would arrest black men for minor crimes oftentimes, ranging from loitering, staying out too late, looking at a white woman, things along those lines. And once they were arrested, many family members lost touch with these uh, family members that they had one day and were gone the next. They had to work. They were also arrested for vagrancy or pretty much being homeless and not having a job along that line. And a lot of the black slaves that were released from slavery had, of course, no income, nowhere to go, so they were vagrant. And so a lot of them were arrested for that cause as well. These convicts were handcuffed, had to work long hours. They would die under the care of the prison guards um, and the prison itself. They oftentimes worked for little to no wage and they were essentially just slaves all over again. That went on for many years. Um, as well as during this time, prison guards were allowed to use brutal force against inmates. Beatings, whippings were common, and 
The brutal uh, treatment of prison guards towards their prisoners was going on until pretty much like the 1970s around, um, and that was when it was outlawed after a civil rights investigation. However, it took a very long time to get there. Just some facts about what occurred during this time of around late 1800s until the 1950s. After slavery was abolished, mind you, over 4,000 black people in America were reported to have been lynched, and that is obviously probably not an accurate recording as it was recorded by white people. These lynchings were so acceptable they were advertised in the press. People would come to them and, and cheer for a person getting murdered and having to hang there suffocating slowly for hours. And when many of the former slaves went to the northern states, they found racism there too. Racism was not mutually exclusive to the south, it was just different types of racism. They were often kept out of nicer neighborhoods, and the term we refer to now as the ghetto, while originally um, originating from the Nazi era, where the Jewish people were forced into small towns called ghettos that were crudely constructed or poorly monitored towns. That is the term, that's where the term ghetto comes from in regards to African American people living in them. So they were forced out of the nicer neighborhoods, which is why today so many black people live in poor income neighborhoods. They never started off in a nicer neighborhood. They were never given that chance or that opportunity. They were often banned from taking up many jobs that other white people could take up. So while they were in these poor communities, while they were trying to gain wealth, uh, similar to that of the, their fellow white citizens, it was much less likely for a black person to become wealthy. There was no family members that had wealth. They were not, again, given the jobs, the same opportunities. The schools were poorly sourced. There was an over um, presence of police forces. And that does statistically show that there is a higher crime rate when you have more police officers in a certain town. Um, just because more eyes on you, more likely you get caught to do something, pretty much, as well as the lack of accessibility to certain things. There are certain crimes that were inevitable. There's this image that many black people choose to be drug dealers or choose to be into certain lifestyles. And in part, yes, there's a choice into becoming that. However, when there's nothing else for your family, what do you expect? Do you expect someone to just work their blue collar job for a family of four and making less than their white coworker to bring home the same amount of food, the same amount of resources? Like, no, there was no other option for these people at certain times. And as we have aged into where we are now, it just continues over because there is still poor um, school education in these communities. There's still overcrowding. There's still a high police force rate. There is no like job opportunities for these people. So the same things are happening over and over and over again and again because nothing is changing. Even today, black families and individuals have a significantly lower median of wealth than white Americans do. This is true even among black people who have a higher education and a high wage job. So with this overpopulation of police in these communities, there is a targetization occurring here where, of course, white people aren't going to be targeted because they're not being looked for. It's easier to turn a blind eye to that in the police force. They turn their eyes towards the POC communities, in particular the black communities. Young black men are killed at 21 times the rate of white men in America. And black women are also at risk here, as we can see with all these other women who have been brutally murdered and assaulted by the police force. These riots that are occurring are not the first. People have been mad at the injustice for a very long time. It is only now that we are seeing more and more white people or people of privilege fighting alongside black people and POC people in the fight for justice. Um, the original riots were predominantly by black people in America. The first was around in like the 1870s, and there's been more little ones. I'm just going over kind of the bigger ones. Um, there was significant uprisings in Chicago in 1919, and in New York City's Harlem neighborhood in 1935. And Detroit had one in 1943, 
And Los Angeles has also had quite a few uprisings. The first occurred as well in 1943, the second in 1965, and the third in 1992. So these riots are nothing new. And speaking of riots, I also want to go into how this country was founded on riots. We rebelled against the monarchy of Great Britain, and the Tea Party wasn't some peaceful little protest of, oh, let me just pour out some tea. It was a riot. There was violence. They destroyed billions of dollars of goods. That is a, a riot. We would not have this country if we didn't have riots and fight for our rights. So these riots going on are nothing new, and they are a fight for what's right. And it is American citizens using their First Amendment, and it being brutally tarnished by the military force involved right now. These currently are using tactics that should never be used against their own fucking citizens. Pardon my French, but it's insane. In the Geneva Protocol of 1925, all chemical warfare, including tear gas, was banned. And yet, currently, we are seeing many people being tear gassed by police, having rubber, having rubber bullets shot at them, blinding people. Children are being shot at with tear gas and rubber bullets. Everyone is being affected by this. There should be no brute force used. Chokeholds are not approved for the cops to use, um, and yet they still use them. And we have seen many people murdered, like George Floyd, from suffocation. That should not happen. Not to mention all of the propaganda techniques um, that our country, which fought against fascist regime, regimes who used propaganda techniques, um, they're enforcing those right now. Cops are kneeling, and then once the cameras and all the pictures are taken of everyone being like, wow, cops are kneeling, how cool, throwing tear gas and shooting over bullets uh, right back at the protesters that they were just kneeling with in solidarity. Solidarity, I should say in quotes. Um, there are blackouts happening during major protests. Um, prohibiting people from making phone calls, taking videos, taking pictures, um, having evidence of what is occurring. This is not right. This is not what our country stands for or ever should have come to. And I'm not necessarily surprised. I shouldn't say necessarily. I'm not surprised. However, I hope that this is a wake-up call for people who want to believe everything's all fine and dandy. I hope people see how wrong this is and it wakes more and more people up because this is not just a riot, this is not just a protest, this is a revolution and it's about damn time we had one. This injustice can no longer happen. We need to change this now. So I know I got a bit passionate there <laughs> and it was a little all over the place. Um, but I really wanted to talk about this. It's so important and I might make a longer video going more in depth, like into more like accurate places of things when things happen, not so scattered all over the place. Um, so if that's something you guys would be interested in, just let me know. Um, and please uh, share this video um, if you think someone needs to be educated because I think it's so important to educate yourself. Um, so there's three books that I'll recommend um, to educate yourself further. Uh, I've read two out of the three. I'm going to start reading the third one. So if it's really horrible, just let me know and I will add a little thing that says don't watch, don't read it. But it seems like a really good book um, from what I've read so far. So the books I'm going to recommend are The New Jim Crow Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. It is by Michelle Alexander. It is a wonderfully written book um, all about the mass incarceration of black people and how far back that goes. She kind of talks about what I said in a way more eloquent way. I would also recommend When They Call You a Terrorist by Patrice Cone Colors. She is one of the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, the mass incarceration book is a bit more scholarly and factual and the When They Call You a Terrorist is a bit more of like an autobiography. So depending on what you're interested in, I would say go for that one. 
And then the book that I am starting to read is called White Fragility. Um, why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism, this little like, note underneath it. And it's by Robin D'Angelo. So I'll link those or write them down below. And yeah, educate yourself. Um, don't stay silent. And I hope this video finds you well. I hope you learned something. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.